Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension. Today we're going to be talking about strawberries. We're also here from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent, and he's going to talk a little bit about gardening. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Today we're talking about strawberries and you know I love strawberries and have you ever thought about when you pick up a strawberry and you see all the seeds which you know strawberries have the seeds on the outside and if you sat there and counted all those seeds you're probably going to be up to about 200 seeds and I think that's pretty nifty as far as what a strawberry is all about as far as the outside of it but let's talk about when you eat it and what's on the inside of it. So the nutrition part of it, it is fat-free, saturated fat-free, cholesterol-free, sodium-free, and it's going to be great in vitamin C, K, and also get some fiber from it, and potassium. So what can I say about this strawberry? Now, when you're selecting those strawberries, even if you're picking those strawberries, you really want to look at them because what you're going to be looking for is you're going to make sure that green part is nice. That's the cap part. You want to make sure it's intact. It looks good. You're also going to look at that strawberry over and make sure you don't see any bruises. You want a firm red strawberry is what you're looking for. So that's the key to looking for one. Now, when you're picking your own, you can just about look at every strawberry that you pick and make sure you have really good strawberries. When I'm going to the grocery store and I'm going to buy strawberries, I'm going to buy the container. I'm not going to just look at the ones on top. I'm going to turn it upside down, look at the sides. I'm going to look at all the areas that strawberries are in that package because I want to make sure I'm getting good, plump, firm, red, no bruises strawberries because they're going to hold up a lot longer. So how long will they hold up? You're going to be able to put in your refrigerator one to three days and hopefully after that third day, if you hadn't decided what you want to do, put them in the freezer because they freeze very, very well. So when we come back, we're going to see what Frank's doing out in the garden to control those insects. We'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Okay. Today we're going to talk about getting ready to plant our tomatoes. Every year uh, we have a big problem with leaf-footed bugs and marmorated stink bugs and they're difficult to control organically and since we don't spray anything on our tomatoes we, won't, we wind up making it out there to the 1st of August and then the bugs take over and, uh, and they get the tomatoes and we don't, don't get anything. We've tried several things. We've used trap crops and that worked pretty good. Uh, last year we actually got a little vacuum cleaner and we just vacuumed them off of the tomatoes. Uh, that worked pretty good. I had, uh, I had an intern from UGA helping me last year and, uh, and she was fast and she could catch them. I had a hard time catching them with the vacuum cleaner but we caught uh, three or four hundred of them I guess before the summer was over but this year we're going to do a little bit different we've got and of course we got a real windy day here to, for working with this stuff but it's okay uh, I'm going to grow determinate tomatoes in these beds this year T determinate tomatoes they don't grow quite as tall as the indeterminates and they make a crop in over two or three weeks they're uh, they're finished so we, we've been able in the past to get lots of tomatoes off of these determinants that we have grown. So this year we're gonna just do determinants. So they're gonna be growing in these beds. I moved, uh, I've grown tomatoes for three years in this other bed. So this year I'm moving uh, to these uh, boxed in beds here just to get a little different place. So uh, maybe not so much disease is built up around here. So. I'm going to use some insect barrier cloth to cover these up with. So we have taken uh, some PVC pipe, uh, a 10 foot piece of half inch PVC. Uh, we anchored it 
with some rebar. We drove uh, the rebar in the ground here so that uh, that's what's anchoring this thing in about a in about a four foot loop. So these are four foot apart and, and the half inch PVC makes that curve. Uh, the material is actually three or four inches shorter than this PVC so I cut I cut three or four inches off of a 10 foot piece in order for my fabric to work right with it. So this is what's going to hold the insect barrier cloth. I'm working right now on the irrigation. The, the irrigation needs to be, uh, and of course the wind is giving us a hard time here, uh, but I left it out last night in the thunderstorm and it was still here this morning, so I think we're okay. Uh, I'm working on the irrigation. Uh, I've got to reposition these little nozzles. This is what I use. They're down on the ground. I'll put one beside each plant so that, so that water is good. We've looked at this stuff in the past, so we won't spend a lot of time on it. But that's I got to go through here now and position these in this new arrangement so they get in the right place with our our tomatoes. So um, we're going to take this cover and put it back on here so you kind of see what it looks like. I got my assistant Kendall here is going to help me do this because with all this wind I'm not sure I can do it by myself. So just give us a minute here and we'll we'll get this cover position back on here. Up above. I think, you know, we got to put these on there. It's going to cut that fabric. And we'll work on a little detail here, sealing up the, the ends and what have you. And, and we'll let it sit out here in the wind and, and perfect our 
attachment here so we don't have it just blowing away on us. We've got some little clips that go on and then we're using a, a, a bigger clip to fasten that tight so that that holds it in place. And uh, this is gonna keep the bugs out. With the exception of this March wind that we're dealing with here today, this is gonna be our attempt at controlling the stink bugs and the leaf-footed bugs this year because we're still not going to spray anything. Um, and I think what we're going to do now is go back inside and see what Susan is fixing. I heard it was something like a strawberry smoothie, so I'm looking forward to, to doing that. Welcome back to Garden Delights. I hope you learned a lot from Frank and how to keep those pesty pests out of those gardens. Insects is what I'm talking about. So now let's start with what I want to make is a strawberry smoothie. It's really simple, not a whole lot of ingredients, but let me tell you what I've done so far. And it's really simple because it's like two, two, and two as far as everything you're going to put in it. So first you're going to have two cups of orange juice, two cups of fat-free plain yogurt, and you can use vanilla if you want that, two bananas chopped up, and the bananas are frozen, and you'll notice that they did not turn really dark, and the reason why is I put a little acid on as far as the little bit of this uh, orange juice on the bananas. That keeps them from turning. Also, about 18 to 20 is gonna be medium-sized strawberries is gonna be what you'll need as far as two cups of strawberries. And they're also going to need two cups of pineapples. So really, this is all you need to make this smoothie. So the first thing you're going to do, you want to put your liquid in first because you want to be able to blend it. So if I can get this blender top off. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in the orange juice. So it's about two cups. Now, if you wanted to make less, you can just come down to one, one, and one on everything, which makes it really nice. But when you make up to two of everything, that means what you can do is you can also freeze this and it makes really nice smoothies for later. So let's say that you're traveling in at work and you want a smoothie that morning before you go to work and then you want one later for your lunch, you can just freeze it until you get ready to eat it. Maybe take it out just a little bit of time to let it thaw out and you've got your smoothie ready to go. So I think that is just a wonderful way to go. And just think about when it's hot outside, what better way to cool off than a smoothie, but not only that, a strawberry smoothie, which is full of great nutrients. And you know, you just can't beat it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my frozen, and this is kind of like your ice, your um, frozen bananas, your frozen strawberries, all that's kind of like your, your ice to it. So now I'm gonna go ahead, and I think I'm gonna swap out and put the, the uh, pineapples in next, cause that way they'll have a little bit of chill, has a little bit of juice in there. And now I'm gonna load it up. See if I can move this to the side. I'm gonna load it up with some strawberries. And I may have to do just a little bit at a time, cause this is gonna be full. But once it starts going, it'll be fine. And I may have to use my spatula to kind of push it down. But I do want the juice because the juice is going to push it a lot further up and get and grab it and everything. So one thing I want to make sure is to make sure when you're putting it back on, make sure you have your lid on because that's going to be important because you don't want it to spill all over the place and you have a smoothie all over your counter and maybe even your ceiling. So let's make sure that the top is on, it's secure, and that's important. Now, I have power on and I'm just going to pulse a couple of times and see what, just to kind of pull. And if you can see, I've already started from just that little pulse, the strawberries have already started coming down into it. So I'm just gonna keep pulsing because I want a really nice strawberry look. And the reason why I like to pulse is because you don't wanna to go too far. You really wanna make sure it's a good smoothie that you can drink with a straw or a spoon. And right now it is looking really good. I'm gonna go a little bit further. And I think what I'm gonna do now is release it. Oh, it looks so good and it smells really good. 
I'm just going to take my spatula. I see a little bit of the pineapple to the side, and I just want to work it down to make sure it's down. Oh, this is going to be good. All right. That should be good. I am going to put the top back on. And any blender will work. Um, so whatever you have at home will work. Let's do it just a couple more times. And I am getting that wonderful strawberry look. And I think I am going to call it a strawberry smoothie now. So it is ready. Can't wait to pour it up and taste it. We'll see you back in just a little bit and we'll be tasting that smoothie. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Frank, we have a strawberry smoothie and I can't wait to taste it. I so. heard some rumors about that. You did? And yeah, we I talked it was about good. that a little bit this morning. I said that I understood we were having a strawberry smoothie. Yes, and I have you ready, but I've got to decorate it. So you have to wait just a minute before you have to try some. I even have a straw for you. A straw? Yeah. Okay. I guess since we're on TV, I'll use a straw. Or you can drink it, but if you do, you know what that means? You're going to have a mustache. So it's up to you. You can choose no, or not. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'll go I'll go with the straw. You'll go with the straw. So you know what? You got to decorate when you serve something to somebody. So what I did is I just kind of barely slit that strawberry. So that means you okay. can, and it is washed because you know you have to wash your fruit. So you can eat the strawberry now or you can take it off, but I still have to decorate. I had to hold my little finger up when I drink this. Yes, of course. So here is your straw. So you are ready to go, I'm and I can't go. wait. I feel like I'm on the beach. Mmm. That is good. That's good. And it's got just enough chill to it. And I froze in the strawberries, and I froze the bananas to give it that chill, but it's really good. Everything else was cold also. This is really good, but we had more fun chasing that insect barrier cloth around in the wind. I can imagine. It was, it was windy, so if it stays on there, we're gonna know how to, how to do it. I'm really excited to see it's, how uh, it's gonna work. I am really excited. That is so tasty. You have got to check out the website. I know you're gonna love it. So easy to make too. And Frank and I will see you next time on Garden Delights. Very good. Mm -hmm.